Are you ready to take your Jeep off-road, but you don't know if you can trust your axles? Then it's time to trust them. Hey guys, Patrick from Iron Rock Off-Road here. Today, we are going to be trusting a rear axle so that we can trust it off-road. We got a Wrangler behind us with a 44 rear end, and uh, it's already got a locker, it's running 37s, Kamali axles, next thing up, we gotta reinforce that housing. That's what we got right here. So for the Dana 44 rear axle, we, it's a, it's a three-piece design. We're gonna have our top cradle and our front and rear plates. All right, now assembly's pretty easy. We're gonna just get this cradle flipped upside down and start laying the plates in there. We've got these nifty little notches of different sizes that will correlate with the cutouts in the cradle of different sizes. And we do overbend that cradle just a hair, just to give the, a little bit of preload to the plates. That way it kind of helps keep it together while we're trying to place it on top of the axle before it's welded. Now this is a non-Rubicon 44, but the truss is cut to fit both uh, to include uh, additional holes in the cradle for your locker wiring, things like that. Uh, now we're gonna start disassembling a couple of things, getting the breather hose out of the way. Um, and I think we're gonna droop the axle a little bit too, just to give ourselves a little bit more room to work. We've got the shocks disconnected, which got our axle to droop a little bit more, so we got more room to work in here. We're gonna test fit. We're gonna plop the truss on top and see how much uh, more disassembly we may or may not have to do. All right, got a nice fitment pretty much all the way around. Looks like we're pretty, pretty close to this track bar bracket. So I think we're gonna have to take that off to continue. No problem, still easy. Next thing is, make sure we have proper room for welding. We gotta take off this track bar bracket. Now we haven't made a video on these yet, so if that's something you'd like to see, drop a comment, let us know. Okay, so we've done all our marking, so we can start cleaning here. One thing we wanna point out is we do have a nice tight clearance all, uh, around the center section. So if you want to be a Tommy Tough Nuts and do some welding on that cast, absolutely go for it. Uh, wouldn't be a bad idea if you're going all the way with a four link or something like that, where you got your upper control arm mounts up top. But for our application today, we're gonna skip it because we don't think we need it. So we're all cleaned up. We're ready to put the uh, truss back on the axle. Now you guys have seen that I can turn a wrench and use a little bit of a grinder, but when it comes to welding, I'm gonna lead that to our lead welder over here, Ryan. So I'm gonna plop this on the axle and let him get to work. So Ryan just completed his uh, first run at the truss and you can see he's done a ton of tack welding, making sure that everything is gonna be where we want it to be before we commit and do full passes. Because when you do that, you get too ahead of yourself and then something's wrong. Well, now you gotta go buy $500 worth of grinding wheels to cut it all off and do it all again. So don't, don't do that. Take your time, do the tack welds, get it mocked before you fully commit. Now, as Ryan is going to go and do all of our full passes around the truss and the axle tubes, again, we're not going to bother doing the center section on this project. Um, the big thing is to, to keep in mind is heat. Uh, even though this is, you know, a thick gauge steel, we're pouring a lot of heat in there to attach it. We don't want to weaken the housing when we're trying to reinforce it. So he's going to be, you know, skipping around to different places to let it, you know, cool down a little bit before he puts more heat back in that same direct area. So you'll see that as uh, Ryan gets back after it. Here.
So Ryan just finished up doing the welds. Um, obviously, we got all the contact points on the axle tubes. The plate's going up to the cradle. Um, it's kind of personal choice. It's more of an aesthetics. Once you get this amount, this amount of weld to include the, uh, I guess you'd call it a plug weld, where the notches in the plate meet the holes in the cradle, this thing's strong. From here, we're really more weld is just aesthetics. Also, as Ryan was finishing up, he had a great pro tip for us. As you're welding, you want to put your ground as close to where you're welding as possible. Like you don't want to put this on the front axle while you're welding on the rear axle because all that's going to travel on through and potentially harm the electronics of your vehicle. I don't speak Spanish. Uh, Breaking parts cleaner, non-chlorinated. Well, now that it's on, we can uh, throw some paint on it, start putting things back together. And now that I've trust this axle, I can trust this axle. If you dig the video, make sure you like, share, comment. Make sure you follow us on uh, social media, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. And of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hey guys, <clears throat> whoa. <clears throat> Time to trust it. Dude, seriously, how many times I gotta say trust? Trust. It's gonna get fing silly. Trust. 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 Trusted. <laughs> Helps if I put it in the right way. Now, now it's backwards. What am I doing? Are you drunk again? I guess. All right.